Hey guys, how you doing? Brian Holder here. Brian Holder Graphic Design. Check me out online, bjholder.com. This is my website. Today I'm going to talk about the WYSIWYG Web Builder 8. And what we're going to learn is how to use the Style Manager. What the Style Manager does is allow you to style different text styles, gradients, and hyperlink styles so that your website can be uniform across all pages. So you know, every link that appears in the sidebar will be the same consistency, the same color, same effects when you hover over them. And then the, all the H1 headlines that appear throughout every page of your site always appear the same, the same font, the same size, the same color. Uh, so the column here on the left that you see is just text that's styled in the page. Okay, so it's not a true H1 here. Uh, the text that you see on the right side is using the heading styling, and you can see where it changes up here. That's what this uh, that's what this bar here does is changes the style of the text. So to get to the style manager, you're going to want to go to array. Um, I'm sorry, format. Second option down is styles. We're going to click on that. This brings up your style manager. These are all of the default styles that the program will come with here. You can add styles and you can edit the ones that are here. Um, so right now we're going to edit the ones that are here. We're going to edit our heading styles. Uh, if you're not sure what H1, H2, and H3 mean, what these headings are, you need to learn. You need to be using them. They're very, very, very important for search engine optimization. So if you're not sure what they mean and you're not using them, I want you to stop this tutorial right now. Go on YouTube, search for search engine optimization, or search for the term SEO. Learn about it first, then come back to this tutorial and, and pick up. Okay, so to edit these, what we're going to do is highlight the one that we want to edit, click on the edit button. So the first couple of settings we have here, we have background settings and some font settings. Uh, the background settings, you typically just want to leave that alone. You want text to be formatted on top of whatever color is below it. Um, the only time you'd want to set it like a background per se is if you have an image, the text on top of an image. You know, I would really try to avoid doing that. Uh, it's not, it's not very good. If anything, maybe set an op opaque rectangle or something below the text. Uh, layer it, layer it kind of between the image and the text. But don't, don't use the background on top. It's just, it looks like crap. It kind of makes your site look like it was built in the 90s. So we're going to skip on down to the the font settings. So. Here we have uh, bold, whether you want this font to be bold or not. I typically go with a nice big bold uh, H1 font. Uh, you can choose whether you want it to be italicized or not. The font name, uh, if you haven't enabled all fonts, and you're probably looking at a list of about 15 fonts, these are these are web safe fonts. So we're going to use Tahoma because I know that's in your list. My list is a little bit different. Letter spacing, that's the amount of space that goes between each individual character. I don't mess with that because it, it tends to uh, tends to really screw things up. Line height is how 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 uh, tall each line, individual line of text is. Um, you probably use Microsoft Word and and you know how uh, you can double space your paragraphs. It's, it's kind of the same thing. So if you use double spacing, you set 2.0, which means that each line is literally twice as big as it's supposed to be. Um, I usually do like maybe a 1.3, give it a little bit of white space underneath uh, underneath each line. Okay, uh, nowadays 24, it's a little bit small I think, I, I like to go nice big fonts, so I'm going to use a 36 I think. Strikeout, not sure why you would want to use that, I don't use it. Uh, text color, let's set this to a mild gray, a tiny bit darker since it's an H1 here. Underline, we're not going to do. Okay, here if you want to do some custom styles, if you know much about CSS, you can add a, uh, a custom text shadow or, um, you know, any, any kind of CSS that you want to add here, you can throw into there. Uh, margins of padding for more white space if you want to change those. And then uh, you have the option to add a shadow or a kind of glowing effect. I, I don't mess with that. It uh, never seems to render very well. That's it. That's how you edit the H1. So I can go through and show you how to do all of these. As a matter of fact, I think I will. I'll show you how to do H2 so you can see how it affects all of these. So I'm just going to edit this real quick. Oops. 
So what I do is I typically enjoy having a real thick, bold H1, but then a real thin H2. Don't ask me why. It's just my preference. I went 36 in my H1, so I'm going to go 28, I guess, in my H2. I'm a little bit lighter. Oh, line height, let's make it go into three, and that's Okay, so I hit OK, now watch. See that? This changed, and this changed, because that was an H2. And this, for whatever reason, got unformatted, so all of these were actually supposed to change. You can see how easy this is. Now I don't have to go through and set the font, set the color, set the size every single time. I just set the style that I want. So if I had custom styles for my text, and say I have a certain paragraph or a certain text that I use in the sidebar versus the text that I use in the main page, I could I could just set the style for the sidebar and just look at each split, boom, format it, it's done. I don't have to mess with it. And the best part is if I have multiple pages that are using this type of headline, I just change the style once and all of my pages are updated. I don't have to go through and update every single page. So that's uh, that's this tutorial. Stay tuned on my YouTube channel. Subscribe. I have some more tutorials that are coming up. We're going to teach you how to use web uh, Google web fonts in your designs. Like you see here, I have a custom, uh, custom font I'm using for my H1 and my H2 tags. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. And I have a real nice one coming up pretty soon. I'm going to show you how to do this. Use this uh, beautiful pricing pricing box. Holy cow, this is I have the worst item out here apparently. Wow. Okay, well, at any rate, I'm gonna teach you how to make a beautiful price box. Uh, just like you see on WordPress sites, uh, they usually use like some kind of a plug-in. I'm gonna teach you how to make it in WYSIWYG, and that's coming up. So subscribe today, stay tuned. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later.